sent her pot Jolly Ranchers. You can boil down the essence of the pot? What is that called? Yeah, no, you can, you can, anyway. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, this isn't a public discussion. Which, but also, <laughs> we're members of the more conservative society, so this just seems absurd. Yeah. yeah, so your students, in addition to coming under these new market pressures, are, are they at all more flexible about genre and how they think of writing than maybe they were 15 years ago? No, they think of genre as how I can make more money. <laughs> they don't think of genre as I think we should give Pulitzer Prizes to books that have elves in it. In other words, they're not looking to champion the genres as is. They're looking to use the genre as a way to pump up their sales. I don't think it's any accident that now that literary fiction, no one feels sure about how it's going to go. People feel their books selling less and less in the United States. Suddenly, everybody wants to write a genre book. And they will come to the defense of genre books now that they're writing them, but they were never coming to the defense of them when they weren't writing them, nor are they arguing that the genres are valuable per se. What they're saying is that I'm a literary writer, I want to write about vampires, but I don't want you to penalize me for doing that. And they're getting away with it, because it's, there's a totally two-track system in the United States. If a literary writer writes about genre shit, we all clap, and we're all like, oh my god, the lines are becoming fluid. <laughs> the, lines, the lines will become fluid when I see people up for Guggenheims who are drawing the Fantastic Four comic books. I will believe the lines will become fluid when people are writing books about orcs and elves are being honored. But right now, this discussion about genre exists without a very important framework which is privilege. I do not want to talk about genre without the word privilege. People who are literary writers have privilege. I can enter into genre, and my passport will not only not be checked, I will never be tarred by it. Genre writers, almost every one of them, with a few exceptions, never get are literary. permanently tarred for writing about fucking werewolves. You know, and I just, I think that this is, this has been, this has been a very deceptive conversation. Mm. You know, not, very, this, very not this one, but the one. <laughs> this one. <laughs> <laughs> but your your next novel is 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 what? How would you describe it? Yeah. Oh, thank you, sir. You know, we're about to chew the glasses. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Very kind. My next novel is about this very problem. Really? Yeah. My next novel is a, it's a game. It's a genre book set inside of a literary fiction that provokes this game. That's why it's taken forever. <laughs> you know? Well, because you, you can't just have your cake and eat it. You know, there's got to be a way that you completely try to undermine this conversation. So I guess a part of me is thinking that I can do something the same way that I undermined, I guess in my novel I felt always that I undermined the writing process by showing how much writing novels is like dictatorships. You know, I want to do the same thing. I want to show how much the practice of people like me writing genre is about something equally disturbing. So I was just hoping that I would use the book to implicate myself fully in privilege, which I enjoy doing. Mm. <laughs> well, um, I think we've gone for about an hour. I, I, I want to leave time for anyone to have any questions um, for, for Juno. 